You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button on our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for March 16th, 2018. It's not safe for work. Coming to you live from Just Fire Everybody Friday, it's The Professional Left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. We're recording this on Friday afternoon, and by this time tomorrow morning, I don't know, uh, the entire government might be fired except for the entire Trump family who will run everything. Yeah, and then they'll be cleaning out the Fox News green room to rehire whoever they're going to put in because yeah. it's just it's just reality TV 24-7 now. Yeah. That's all it and is. They can, and they can do it. And, yep. the, and Paul Ryan has decided that he's just going to curl up into a ball under his desk mm-hmm. and dream of – Ayn Rand novels, Dream of Being, John <laughs> Galt, right. Jerk Off to, you know, Anthem or other obscure shit by Ayn Rand. Uh, you know who, but you know who's making out like a fat rat in these in these hard times? In these I times, have a honey? feeling you're going to tell me, and I think I know, but go ahead. Uh, we can just ask, stop asking people for money, because our <laughs> fake sponsor, our, the good people at Where the Good Lord Split You, Emergency Farewell Party Supplies, are doing so well. They're just writing us giant Ed McMahon novelty checks every week saying, Whatever you're doing, keep doing it because we just can't keep enough stuff in stock. Um, as you all know, uh, they're still offering the you're going to need a bigger cake group discounts for large numbers of people who get fired. So let's say that you are Rex Tillerson and that they not only fire, fire you, but they fire the aide who confirmed the story because the story you confirmed was not the White House story. That would qualify you for a group discount at where the good Lord split you. Uh, but now they've got their liquor license, as we mentioned last week. They can offer you going away beverage service. So last week we had uh, two specials. The Beat You to the Punch, a refreshing quitting before they fire you cocktail. And the Nunberg Kamikaze, which was a shot of vodka and Zoloft served flambe style. You don't actually drink it. You just watch your career burn. <laughs> but this week they've added to their menu of features the Wreck-It Rex, uh, which is just 20 ounces of scotch. Right. Yeah. And... <laughs> The McMaster Blaster, which is 24 ounces of scotch. Yep, just pour so it. <laughs> it just just keeps coming. A river of booze is flowing through D.C., through their, their, their doors, where they convert it into party paraphernalia and party offerings, and they send us this giant check, our fake sponsor. Let me be very clear. This is a fake sponsor. It should be real, but it's not. So a lot of our other sponsors, uh, Dukakis Khakis, for example, Croc Blockers, they're taking a the back seat during this uh, – really boom season for uh, people getting whacked from the worst White House in American history. Yeah, and it so, just seems to be a... Uh, but it seems to be part of the script to oh, it is. continue to toss things up because they know that Donald Trump walking into a room where there's a camera is breaking news on Fox. Right. Literally. And and they have the Fox distraction box right. that they now have at the White House, which is any time... Let's say a porn actress is threatening to sue you. Uh, you suddenly decide you're going to bust into a meeting with South Korea and say, sure, I'll take a meeting with Kim Jong-un. Yeah, what the hell? Why not? Because you really, really don't want the headline to be that day, um, porn star suing president over the thing they did. Yeah. Um, and maybe he threatened to beat her up, uh, which is the latest thing, th- physically threatened her, which we're not sure about, but it's alleged. Well, and uh, and if we if we're going to start with our news roundup with with Stormy Daniels, which is just fine with me, uh, I think Stormy Daniels' attorney is as big a threat to Donald yeah. Trump yeah. as Bob Mueller is. Yes, uh, in that he knows how to go on TV and create headlines. He does, and he does not care uh, how long it takes. He's got forever. Uh-huh. Uh, he'll go on and and say as much as he can but by not saying things he's also saying things right yeah. yeah and this is a story that the average person can quickly and easily wrap their head around oh yes without yes. doubts you know yes. it, everybody understands sleeping with a porn actress paying her off to be quiet before the election cheating on your wife you know, and everyone understands that this is who Donald Trump is anyway so 
this attorney going on and saying, well, you know, I have six other women who have approached my law firm for, quote unquote, help uh, with their Donald Trump case. I can't talk about it. Uh, And and Anderson Cooper just looked like the look on his face was just like, (laughs) you know, oh, my God, what what next? Uh, He said, I can't talk about any of them because we haven't vetted their stories. Now, here's here's a thing where an actual reporter would not be able to come on Brian Williams and actually say this. But Stormy Daniels attorney can come out and say this, right? Sure, can. Absolutely can. And 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 then... Anderson Cooper says, well, now, do any of these women have non-disclosure agreements with the president of the United States? Yeah, two of them, I have seen the non-disclosure agreements. I do not know whether the non-disclosure agreements with the president of the United States are being paid out of the same LLC that Stormy Daniels was paid out of. And you're just like, and then he says, the attorney says, believe me. This is Christmas and Hanukkah all wrapped up into one. And he's right. not being shy about this, no, right? No. Like, but this is – I will go on like this for five years if I have to. And he was and on, he was on prepared- Anderson Cooper. He was on Morning Joe. He was on uh, another CNN program yesterday. You know where he's not? You know where he's not being invited on? Fox. Fox. <laughs> well, have you – I mean – over the last year and a half, we have seen the parade of Trump lawyers. Yes, right. And they are morons. They yeah. are they are either belligerent, uh, New York mob lawyers, or they're just nuts. Uh, I, I haven't seen any of them that are they you know they they have either a wild mustache, they look like they're about nine hundred years old, and that they are in way over their head, and they know their client is a pathological liar so that nothing he tells them can be trusted yeah but uh, but drift glass uh michael cohen we learned from uh stormy daniels lawyer on cnn michael cohen refers to himself yeah. as ray donovan i'm ray donovan no no <laughs> you're bunchy donovan <laughs> you know come on bunch pull your pants up god damn bunch what have you got to sell who just has no control over anything? Who's a kind of a man baby? Yep. Uh, who's who's? Uh, except he's not sweet. No, uh, he's just no. a belligerent prick. Yeah. Yes, who right. got a, who got a law degree? Yeah. And there are there's there will always be work for a belligerent New York thug asshole uh, with a degree with a yep. law degree from yep. some fly by night shithole school. Yep. Um, and Donald Trump has gathered up all of these despicable scumbag lowlifes into his orbit. And that works great when all you are trying to do is fleece old women and kids out of their money at Trump University or run real estate scams in New York. You need an army of thug moron lawyers who just threaten to sue everybody for everything. Right. <clears throat> but you are playing – excuse me. <clears throat> excuse me. You're playing in an entirely different league now. Yep. yep. And you are not ready for the shit that's coming rolling down the hill. And neither are your lawyers because your lawyers have never done anything like this before. Well, the the, uh, M.O. of all of the attorneys is Donald Trump has more uh, disposable assets at his disposal than anyone that might try to sue him in the real estate world. So you let people sue you, you don't pay them, you let people sue them, you, and then you wait it out until the person is broke and ready to settle for whatever you're willing to pay. And that just won't work with Stormy Daniels' attorney no. because ka-ching, 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 even if Stormy Daniels doesn't pay him a dime right now, the fact that he is on TV every day increases his Q score in the legal world forever. He's, he's, ma- he's going to make out like a man. He'll get a book deal. He'll have celebrity clients for the rest of his life. This is golden for him that like he said christmas and hanukkah i'll go for five years i don't care i'm ready and and, and they've painted themselves into a corner where they can't i mean they've they've admitted enough where the imagination filling in the details is far worse than the action whatever the hell actually happened so yeah they're they've damned themselves because the fact that they had to retain this goon this goon lawyer the fact that they had to get a non-disclosure agreement with a with a porn star. The fact that she has pictures. <laughs> yes. All just screams. Oh, you're fucking guilty. You're fucking yes, guilty. Right, I mean, I don't. Right. I know tech. You're still trying to get out on a technicality, but there are no technicalities in the court of public opinion. Exactly. You are That's where the trial guilty. is taking place. Yep. And and here's the yep. thing: seventy five percent of Trump voters don't care about this at all. But those, don't care about that, it at all. that is what nineteen percent of the electorate. 
right? Uh, oh, that, that's my very point. But yeah. it is uh, all this week, uh, you and I and basically everyone who follows us on Twitter – um, and everyone who follows this, um, uh, my reads, my blog or Crooks and Liars or professional left podcast that we know of has been screaming at Twitter and at television, at the radio. No, it's not voters. It's Republicans. Yep. It's not yep. Congress. It's Republicans. Yep. The 75% yep. of people we're talking about who are so morally bankrupt that they, they think that this is just nothing are the same people who were just screaming for Bill Clinton's blood. Exactly. For, for having a consensual blow job and they're lying about it. Yep. So yep, yep, th- this yep. is a Republican problem, and this is a nice door into the very first item on our news roundup, which is that Robert Mueller crossed the line of death. He did the red line. <laughs> he did. The red he line crossed the red line. Yep, he has issued subpoenas for the Trump Organization, the giant uh, transcontinental octopus of illegal, shady, shitty business deals, Russian money, hookers, God knows what all other dirty shit they're into. Um, and insisted on those financial records. And that's the doom of the Trump presidency and the Trump brand. Everything, every single thing having to do with Donald Trump is now shit. Now you yeah. can limp forever on, on being a martyr to those 70, to the fraction of a fraction of the Americans who think that no matter what he does, he's, he's a God, but he has destroyed his family. Mm-hmm. He has destroyed their marriages. Mm-hmm. He yes. has destroyed his brand, which is really all he is. Uh, he has destroyed the future of his kids. He has destroyed the presidency uh, for as long as he occupies that office. Uh, all in a, a year. <laughs> a year yep. and a half. That's, yep. that's all it took for him to completely destroy everything in his life. And I was thinking this morning, he has also destroyed the ability of future Republicans to complain about anything that a Democratic president well, does. This is where you and I disagree. And I know that you, your point is, yeah, but they're so shameless, they'll do it anyway. And I get that. But I think in the – my personal opinion is the court of public opinion will remember how bad Trump was at least for a little while. I hope you're right. I really do. And this is why you and I and our listeners and our readers have to be extraordinarily vigilant now. Right. Because all over the media, all the usual guardians of yep. establishment sensibilities and Lifeboat and builders. Yep. Yep. Um, the, the the David Brookses and the Michael Gersons and the so ons and so forths are all building lifeboats now. And they're all they're all gathering around the sensibility that, well, Donald Trump is this freak event. It's not the Republicans. And you can hear you can hear the, the Tea Party Bush off yep. alibi machine, <clears throat> excuse me, warming up in the background. You can hear them saying, well, he's not he's you know, he's a Democrat or he's an independent or I'm an independent. But whatever it is, even though I voted for the son of a bitch and cheered for him. And I'm a racist and I'm a gun toter and I, I don't believe in science and da da da. I am personally not responsible for any of this stuff. Yep. And yep. that's going to be their story. And we have to burn the bridges, burn the light boats. This time around, they cannot be allowed to get away with that. And if that means I'm a partisan tribalist, then so be it. I will right. be a partisan tribalist. The minute they drop that and say, yes, I was, yes, I did, yes, I take responsibility for it, um, this shit is my shit and I own it, I will stop hectoring them. Yeah. But, I, I do want to add John King and give him this week a particular award for lifeboat building. Uh, <laughs> he actually said uh, about the House Intel Committee, he blamed it on a hyper-polarized world. Yes, yes. Isn't it you strange? Know, oh, could we please come to a bipartisan conclusion on whether Russia tried to meddle in the elections? Because they, they did. did. Yeah, which side is denying it? Oh, mm-hmm. wait. Uh, is, you know, is... It, why bother if we can't come to a bipartisan conclusion? We're so hyper-polarized on both sides. Yeah, we're not. No, you and, know, we have this lack of trust between the two parties. <laughs> no, John King, that's not what happened. Yeah, but, that's, that's, but that is the classic uh, lifeboat building tact. Yeah, And that's my, my existential question of the week, but let's go through the news roundup. All right. All right. Can we, can we also start with Southeast High School? Oh, Would you please, mind if I mention no, Southeast High School? Of course not. Of course not. It's great. Because yeah. middle child uh, attends Southeast High School, uh-huh. right? Uh-huh. And uh, youngest child will attend Southeast High School next year. And uh, junior dude is a graduate of Southeast High School in Springfield, yep. Illinois. Yep. And baby, they are on the way to the basketball championships, state champs. Uh, they're playing the game today. The games today. Uh, actually it actually started already. I think. Yeah, one one o'clock it started. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, middle child took the fan bus to the game, 
And uh, we want to thank the funeral home in town yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that sponsored the uh, fan bus and bought tickets for all the fans to go. So yeah. that that's and they get the day off of school. You know, the the uh, walkout was a little contentious, but yeah. getting on the fan bus to go to a basketball game is an excused absence. Go well, figure. That, and this um, is this is a really good encapsulation because yeah. two days yeah. ago, yep, a lot of these students. Were were walked did did the walkout of their yeah. high school? Yes, they did, including middle child. Yeah, including middle child, and uh, they did it really kind of not quite sure what the consequences were going to be, mm-hmm. but you know it was like this is you're protesting in in pursuit of a belief uh, in a very nonviolent way of something you truly believe in. Mm-hmm. God bless you. We're behind you 100. percent If if they ding you for it, put it on your college application. Right, right. <clears> and when we then, told young middle child that, like, yeah, go for it. You know, and then two days later. They're on the fan bus going to see their basketball team. That's just such a uh, – that I never had that. Yeah, yeah, my, yeah. My high school protested nothing. Yep. <laughs> you know? Yep. They were like – we were that trough in between Nixon and Carter and everyone just felt like shit. And no one quite knew where to put the signs. And it was just depressing as hell. Well, I was um, editor of the school paper and I threatened to quit once and, and won over the uh, – I did win – a battle with the one of the advisors. So that, but that was rare. I mean, and it was over something that a student was writing. It wasn't over some big national issue. So, uh, but yeah, we we kind of missed that in high school. And I, I'm so glad my... that our high school students have activism in their yeah. blood and opportunities for activism. Although it's a terrible world we're living in. Um, junior Somewhere... dude is junior dude is going to the uh, march for our lives in washington yep. and again a bus is sponsored to take uh college students from augustana to go to that in washington so and we're marching we're going to march in springfield we're going to march in springfield Everyone, we know we will yep. be there but southeast high school uh, the worst case scenario is they will end uh second in the state first yep. outside of chicago and uh it's fantastic we're so yep. excited uh they have a great team they have a uh, center who is uh, not only a great basketball player but clearly a good team leader uh, oh. seems to have his head very much on his shoulders and uh, good coach and they're they're going they're going to state so we're You're, very very excited and rumor has it that Governor Hedge Fund was booed at the game <laughs> uh, well, during not the playoffs surprised. yeah yeah and, yeah and well you know he had that deserved. chocolate milk that he mixed up for diversity's sake yeah. right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're thick in the political season. We've had yeah. uh, a number of ads at our house and phone calls. Uh, yeah. Well, young our lady primary was is next Tuesday. Illinois' yeah. primary, we have multiple candidates running for to uh, for the privilege of running mm-hmm. against Rodney Davis in yeah. uh, our district. Yes. Uh, and I voted already. You always wait to vote on election day because you get the good lemon bars They're from the lady of the church. <laughs> I, I, there was a young young lady came to our door yesterday canvassing the neighborhood. It mm-hmm. just just delights me, saying, "Are you are you registered? Are you going to vote? You know, remember don't don't forget to vote." I said, "Hey, we're." Uh, she was looking for junior dude. I said, "He's oh. a college." Well, has he voted? Oh yeah, he voted early. And I I said, you know, I vote. Everyone in this house has voted except me. I vote on election day. And oh, I said because of the baked goods. Yeah, and the she lady at, at like, the church has cookies out. Yeah, does. And she said, "Are you an election judge?" I said, "No, but I know how it works around here." <laughs> And, he voted and Junior Dude no, was an election judge. Yeah, he was. Yeah. So yeah. this so. is our home. <laughs> this is what life is like in our home. And it's yeah. very, very upbeat now because yeah. we yeah. can feel a large blue wave at our back. But um, what we're looking down the barrel of, literally and figuratively, is is some pretty shitty times ahead. That's why we need each other desperately and we need yep. to hang on to each other good and tight. Um, and I've gotten okay. really, really good at protecting my mental health. I know yes. I noticed from six months ago how much better I am at it than I yeah. used to be. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, you know who hasn't gotten better at protecting his mental health? <laughs> Rex Tillerson. Rex Tillerson. <laughs> yeah, uh, he got fired. Uh, then, as I said, they fired the guy who who didn't stick to the story. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to blow through these uh, news stories, stopping here and there. And they're at random, but they are. Rip for, literally ripped from today's headline. That's how sort of news rich, news thick things are. Uh, at a fundraiser, uh, President Stupid bragged that he just made shit up uh, during a meeting with Justin Trudeau. Just yep. made stuff up because hey, why not? Well, yeah, we have a we have a deficit with Canada. No, we have a surplus. Eh, whatever. You know, deficit surplus, whatever. I, it sounded good when it came out of my pie hole. Yep. And just 
every day it's like this. Every day it's it's how will the Republican Party humiliate this country again? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not the voters, not Congress, not the Democrats, the Republican Well, Party. and when the Democratic president comes in and does know shit like this and does yeah. know what the truth is uh-huh. and does know, does honor science, sure. the right-wing media will pay zero attention to that. Oh, no, they'll, yeah. they'll find a reason why he's not an American. Right. <laughs> why he's part of a liberal conspiracy yeah. and something, something that's Fox News politically. must die. Yeah. Well, okay. I, I, I got in a little Twitter back and forth with someone today. I don't have mm-hmm. Twitter fights, but a little back and forth with – Someone lauding David Brooks's column saying, Ugh. we just need to honor everyone and we need to stop this partisanship. If we could just get a, a someone in the White House who wouldn't be so mean, you know, who look to the better angels of people's natures. and We blah, had blah. that. You said it's we had that. that. Yeah. Three fucking years we had that. And and it led to – the and it drove the Republican Party so batshit racist crazy mm-hmm. that all of their racism that they kept in the closet came out of the closet and they elected a, a bright orange madman. Mm-hmm. It doesn't work. Mm-hmm. They don't have better angels. Quit looking for them and start paying attention to the people who actually are in front of you. And I'll, leave, I'll read a little bit from Charlie Pierce's column in a minute. But let's move on to uh, right. gun-related stuff today mm-hmm. in Illinois, or this week in Illinois. The Illinois Senate passed the following gun laws that the NRA is trying really hard to stop. There's HB 1465, a ban on minors with semi-autos and mags over 10 rounds. That passed 33 to 22. And you don't have this in there, but uh, minors who already own those guns have to transfer them to adult ownership within 90 days. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, HB 1467, local gun ban and bump stocks passed 13 to 16 with three abstentions. 37 to 16. I'm sorry, 37 to 16 with three abstentions. And HB 1468, a 72-hour waiting period on certain long guns, which passed 43 to 15. That's one side of the equation. On the other side of the equation, Governor Hedge Fund vetoed legislation that would have required retailers to be licensed by the state of Illinois because it's an unnecessary and burdensome regulation. Mm-hmm. Well, fuck. And that, that is, that's where we stand. We have actually a, a legislature in Illinois who's willing to pass serious but not draconian, uh, which I would prefer to see, gun legislation, gun safety legislation, and a governor who doesn't know how which foot to hop on anymore. Yeah. Because well, and uh, and the argument that you can just cross the board and go over to Indiana and buy anything you want is right. true. It's time to shame Indiana for their uh, lax gun laws. What about Chicago? Well, anyone in Chicago could go right across the border. I know because a friend of mine that worked for me works in Indiana, lives in mm-hmm. Indiana. You can buy whatever the hell you want and haul over the border and no one's going to stop you. It's like right. It's like fireworks except for killing people. Right. Right. And if you'd like to stop that, then stop the importation of human killing weapons into an area where they're not they're, they're not legal. Yep. Which means Indiana. Yep. Um, but nationwide, apparently, uh, by last count, more than three thousand schools had a walkout on Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Three thousand. Three thousand schools. That is that warms my heart. I just. I'm so thrilled with these kids, mm-hmm. these young men and women. I, kids are not really they aren't really kids. They're young men and women. These young men and women just just blow me away they really do and all the 17 year olds are getting ready to register to vote which is fantastic oh, yeah. yeah um and in, in other gun related news a teacher who's also a reserve cop injured three students after accidentally firing a gun inside a california classroom during a class devoted to what blue gal to public what? safety public safety very <laughs> yay and a school resource officer uh, with the alexander alexandria virginia police department accidentally fired his weapon at the George Washington Middle School. So, you know, arming those teachers. Boy, let, there you see it. And right a, two year, a two-year-old shot and killed his one-year-old sibling because someone left a 9 millimeter on the nightstand in Alabama. So, uh, you know, guns kill people. That's what they do. Would you like to hear some local Illinois news that's kind of I fun? would. Um. Uh, my former congressperson, Jan Schakowsky, uh, when I lived up in, in Chicago on the north side, she was my congressperson. Very liberal, very awesome. I have met her many times. I met her a few times down in Springfield. She travels down here quite frequently to do fundraisers and stuff. Um, she is going to win. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she, she's already a blue wave. There's, there's no way she's going to lose. But they had to put up someone against her. And they found an, an Arlington Heights pastor named John Ellison. Okay. And John Ellison apparently has some problems because he and his wife have been ordered to by a judge 
to complete 150 hours of community service and return $49,000 in benefit payments because they ripped it off from a program that they were running to feed teenagers in a religious drug addiction program. Hmm. So not this guy. You know, hmm. just let's see. We, we've got the, the Tim Murphy. Yeah, uh, this is no – I have a question. This is no relation to Keith Ellison at all, right? No, it's L-E-L-L-E. <laughs> right. Or Different Heartland spelling. Ellison as far as I know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but so we have – is it Tim Murphy in uh, Pennsylvania who had to quit his seat because, you know, he wanted to have, have his mistress have an abortion. Right. Um, and he's the anti-abortion guy. That's what opened up the seat for Connor Lamb to come in and roll over the place. We have a uh, child molester in Alabama, which they, they put up as a, a well, and, candidate. And that's a very similar story because yes. in Alabama, the governor – of Alabama had had an affair and there were dirty bits on phone records that were published and so yeah. forth. And so there is a uh, sexual corruption pattern here in the Republican Party that uh, – and it's not just, you know, it's a finding out that you're not that anti-abortion – when it's your mistress, yeah, <laughs> which suddenly. everyone in NARAL could have told you, folks. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Mm -hmm. While all of this behavior is uh, un unpleasant and sometimes illegal and certainly can, uh, to be deplored, what amps it up by a hundred is the fact that these people campaign on a top of a pile of Bibles. Right. These right. are these self-righteous, smug, evangelical, God loves us and hates libtards, uh, uh, Republican Party. Right. That's who they are. And and the fact that they have so utterly perverted the basic cr tenets of Christianity to support people like this and then shrug it off when they get caught. Right. Cause, because cause I'm you know, not I'm not perfect. I'm just I'm forgiven. Yes. I'm forgiven. Yeah. You know, yeah. we're all we're all sinners, really. And Bill Clinton's a sinner too, right? Well, yeah, that's right. different because he's a liberal. Yep. Um, and liberals, something you can't get over. God and let's can't not forget, forget that. that they are trying to close clinics for poor women. Right. Oh, yeah. No, they're just there awful. are plenty of private abortion clinics around the country sure. where, you know, it's a cash only basis and you yep. go in and pay your 500 or 450 or whatever it is and have it taken care of. And that's where their mistresses go. Yeah. That's and where, that's and that's where you know the Baptist white women go on their trip to their shopping trip to Atlanta. We used to call it right. Yep. <laughs> All the Alabama Baptist girls who you know were in college and oops forgot to take my pill, so I'll take a shopping trip to Atlanta and have it taken care of. And because it's you know it's it's a lot like prostitution in Nevada. As long as it's not in my backyard mm -hmm. and I can still close, I can dance on a a stack of Bibles about my politics sure. and I can close clinics for poor women that are accessible to women who can't afford to go to Atlanta for a weekend, then I'm okay because I'm not perfect. I'm just forgiven. Yeah. I'm just forgiven. Uh, do you yeah. want to talk a little bit about Pennsylvania? And sure, because this is there? right outside my dad's district. Yeah. My, my dad's district is actually uh, carved out of Connor Lamb's district <laughs> because it's too democratic. And well, you guys who visited over the weekend. Yes, I saw my dad. We we saw our my yeah. dad on Saturday night up in Chicago. We went up to Good. Chicago for the weekend and had dinner uh, at a pub. Right, it was fun. Yeah, we had and Miller's he's uh, uh, pub, but... he's still a voter. You know, he's a voter and wanted me to say hi to Dick Durbin. I've never met Dick Durbin, but you know, when <laughs> I get back here and meet Dick Durbin, I'll be glad to say hi to Dick Durbin. Um, but yeah, I had a, we had fun. Uh, with my dad, and uh, so this this district that is where Pittsburgh, downtown Pittsburgh, and the north side of Pittsburgh is actually just cut right out of this district. You look yeah. at the map; it's like, nope, we're not putting those voters in there. We want this <laughs> nope. to be a Republican district. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, but it didn't work out that way because for all kinds of reasons, uh -huh. and I I do think uh, the the big reason is that. Republican policies, people are discovering, really hurt them. Yes, they do. And this is the thing that nobody in the media is talking about. We want to talk about, well, Connor Lamb ran as a Republican. No, he didn't. No. Connor Lamb uh, is is the right kind of guy for this district because he's uh, Republican. He's got Republican clothes on uh, over the Democratic body. No, he was running against 
stopping Obamacare. And this is still right. very fresh in people's minds that their health insurance was threatened. And I, I think that I, I'm going to stick to that, that the, we need to stop focusing so much on Trumpism versus, you know, who's running with Trump and who, is Trump hurting or helping or whatever. Republican policies hurt families. Yeah. Yep. Say that. It's not just Trump being awful. And I've really gotten to the point where apart from the damage that Trump is doing with his policies, which are all Republican policies. Right. And the reason the Republican Congress is being quiet is they want to sign or for their terrible policies. Yeah, he's a delivery system for their yes, policies. For their That's shitty all he is, a hollow. Policies yep. And a Supreme Court that will endorse his shitty, the Republican shitty policies. Uh -huh. And those policies will still be out there and being proposed long, long after Trump is gone. So we have to focus on the lifeboat builders who are trying to make this about Trump so that they can go on and push shitty economic policies, shitty health care policies, shitty economic and, and um, environmental policies, especially. Uh, all of that has to go. Mm -hmm. And that's why what uh, happened in Pennsylvania is so important, mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. this district was created out of thin air to be. Uh, candidate proof. Right. It doesn't matter. Republican. What, it doesn't matter who the candidate run, is. Yep. It, they're going to win because there's no fucking way on mm -hmm. God's earth mm -hmm. a Democrat could ever win in this district. Which is why Democrats didn't run in this district the right. last two times. Why they just Bob? didn't run anybody. And I loved what Samantha B said. She said, I love this campaign tactic called trying. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey. The new Democratic campaign tactic. We're going to try to win. And, uh, and they did win. And I also liked – you want to talk for a minute about how Connor Lamb came out and just uh, gave a victory speech yeah. before all the yeah. votes were counted? Like, you know, and, you know, he pretty much had won, but yeah. – Well, this is – this is if you're going to do something Republican, then do <laughs> this one thing, which is uh, like George W. Bush in 2000, just declare victory. Yep. And make it the other guy's problem. You know, make it – well, the, the, uh, the putative winner, the mm -hmm. presumed winner, and make the other guy make the case that – and and in this case, he actually won. This is not a case where some some really shady shit in Florida and right. a bunch of Republican Supreme Court nominees and the president's brother-in-law or brother and his campaign manager all rigged up an election where George W. Bush lost the popular vote. Mm -hmm. Connor Lamb actually won, but he just went out and said, yep, yeah, I'm, I'm declaring victory. We did it. Went to bed. Yeah, we did it. And thanked everybody and went to bed. And this is a, this is a not – it wasn't just that the district was – created specifically so that Caligula's horse could be elected to the U.S. Congress. Mm -hmm. It was It was also everyone in the Trump crime family went down there. Yep. Uh, Donald Trump, uh, Ivanka Trump, his loyal family pet, Mike Pence, went down there. Uh, they had everybody down there campaigning. It was Don Jr. was down there, just pounded away. The, this was like the Tea Party thing focused into one district. The, the Fox News and everyone just poured every ounce of political capital they had into 10 million dollars yep and they failed yep they failed in a district that was plus 20 republican yep well and, and i read about connor lamb like about four months ago i remember sitting up in bed and reading about this candidate and just laugh had tears on my face laughing <laughs> yeah do you remember that i was like I oh do. god this oh. guy's a marine I know. he's a good catholic he's got young kids he's got a health care story he's oh. got <laughs> On yeah. and on and on. And he's handsome. And he's running against... He's a prosecutor. A, and he's a prosecutor. Yeah, and all of it. And it's just... Uh, he he is the kind of candidate in that kind of district that you need to run. And yeah. um, I like how he nullified the abortion issue, according to right-wingers. Well, yeah. he was able to nullify it, but he's personally against it. Yeah, you know what? He doesn't have a womb to have a baby. Right. So he doesn't get to say. Well, in the here's the thing. He doesn't get any say. <laughs> here's the thing. If you're personally against abortion but think women should have the right to choose, that's pro called choice. being pro-choice. <laughs> that's the very definition of being pro-choice. Yeah. He yeah. is pro-choice. Yeah. That yeah. is exactly his position. That is the position of the overwhelming majority of Americans yep. and certainly the Democratic Party. And if you personally and your family personally are offended by it and don't want to do it, don't that's have fine. One. Yeah, I, I'm not worried that Connor Lamb is ever going to have an abortion. No, no. <laughs> he can't. No. 
But so, that's the point. Yeah, the point is yeah. that he's not the savior of the of the Democratic Party. His yes. policy. He is a he is an uh, uh, he is a bellwether, right? Of what's coming, and enough people who are all in agreement on 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 eight or nine core policies of the Democratic Party mm-hmm. are enough mm-hmm. to yeah. put those policies over the finish line and undo begin to undo the catastrophic damage the Republican Party has done to this country for the last thirty years, not just yep. the last. 18 months right but they right. really have fucked this country up badly um yep. and it's yep. uh now is the time when i will read from charlie pierce's column if you don't mind sure i i also want to point out that the democratic party their policies anyone who says the democratic party doesn't really stand for anything yeah. it's mm-hmm. just that the, we've been standing for the same thing for so long people don't think of it as a message right but black lives matter no human being on this planet is illegal. Right. Uh, gays have the right to marry whoever they want, just like everybody else. Women's rights are human rights. We believe in science. Healthcare. We believe in clean, clean water for everybody. Yes. Uh, we believe in justice for all. <laughs> you know, yeah. that thing. And we believe health care is a human right. Those are... You know, they fit on a water bottle, folks. It's not complicated. The problem is it's not complicated. And it doesn't uh, read like the script for a reality TV show. No. So uh, go ahead and read Charlie Pierce. Thank you very much. Well, well, this is a combination of, of uh, David Roberts in Vox and Charlie Pierce in Esquire. Uh-huh. Because David Roberts in Vox, I wrote a post that says, I am David Roberts. I'm not David Roberts. <laughs> <laughs> but my wife suggested it because she said, look, it just might as well just say it. You know, that's might as well you, just come out as the people that are writing just like you. Because it, it really it, – and I, I say that with great affection because what he said was great in detail and well-documented, et cetera. But it really did – it was the question. The most important question for me is this, which is the Trump phenomenon has shown one thing to be true. There are no conservatives in this country who are not Trumpists. Yep. There are yep. – abs- the, the entire Beltway conservative elite – was an inch deep and always was. Yeah. There's nothing there. There's no separate other Republican Party full of reasonable, beard-stroking, Burke-loving um, uh, Brookses. There's this thin veneer of David Brooks and Barry Weiss and uh, and uh, Brett Stevens in the New York Times, all of whom are insisting that there is this there's this other thing out there that doesn't exist. So the question for me is, why has the New York Times and the Washington Post and every cable news organization, why are they so fucking invested in this lie? Why do they keep hiring more and more people just when everyone can see it's a lie? Everyone can see that there is no other Republican Party other than Trump's Republican Party. There's a five-letter word in the English language, Drift Glass. It's called yep. money. That's why yep. they call it money. Yes. Yeah. But, but the thing is, why? Yeah. Why, the, the question is, who specifically – because this is a conspiracy. This is an mm-hmm. actual conspiracy. Mm-hmm. Who and why? Um, but this week, uh, <laughs> David Roberts wrote about it in Vox. And today, of course, uh, David Brooks was all over discovering that Connor Lamb is secretly the, the key to the success of everything because both sides, both sides, both sides. And Heidi Heidkamp is all over it. And all the centrists, all the crazy-ass centrists are out there um, just saying, this is it. This is what we need to do because, you know, voters in those states, they need to have their ego stroked. And Charlie Pierce said um, loudly and clearly what you and I have been saying for a long time. And I'm not saying he copied. I'm saying there's something in the air that we all breathe and we all agree on. And he said it really is time to stop buying every voter in certain states a cookie. Mm-hmm. You, pe- you people. He finally says that you people saddle the nation with a corrupt, incompetent oligarch who, do- who turns everything and everyone he touches into hazardous waste. You did it because he stroked your cultural and social yearnings until you trill like a chorus of locusts. You are yep. done no good service by politicians who keep telling you that you're the salt of the earth or by reporters on expedition who demand that the rest of us be careful of your tender fee-fees. If you want a country to stop being moronic, stop voting for morons. The problem with this country is the Republican Party mm-hmm. and the people who keep apologizing for it and the people who keep pretending there is some other Republican Party out there that is populated by Bill Crystal and George Will and David Brooks at, just waiting in the wings. There is no such party. There are simply the Republican Party and the Quisling collaborators who enable that party named George Will and David Brooks and Brett Stevens and Barry Weiss and you all know the rest of the list. And today I mentioned that sort of volubly because it's in the air today. Everyone's writing about it today. I might write about it myself, but I thought 
you know what? It's kind of cool when something you've been writing about for a long time becomes the topic of conversation everywhere. So, way to go. Today, uh, I have a I have a score update for you, Drift yes, Glass. At halftime, yes. Springfield uh-huh. Southeast leads North Chicago ninety one to thirty. <laughs> <laughs> really? Now really? they can turn that around. Well, okay. So North well, Chicago, let's, it's halftime. It's halftime. Let's, let's be fair. It's that's the popular vote. <laughs> um, God knows what the Electoral College will show. <laughs> But uh, the popular uh, vote looks very good for, for our, our uh, boys and girls at golly Southeast. Golly gosh. Golly gosh. Yeah. Uh, uh, in, in sadder news, uh, Donald Trump's wife is filing for divorce. Or Donald Trump Jr.'s wife is filing for divorce. Yes. She she's had it. Apparently, uh, she's decided she wants to stop being a member of a crime family and would like to leave now very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. God knows what she knows. So uh, I believe she's uh, acquired herself a criminal defense attorney. And that should be exciting. Well, I'm sorry. Then, I'm sorry. So that yes. was a typo. So- Southeast leads North Chicago 30 to 19. Oh, oh see, there you go. Ooh, see, once... see, we had a recount. <laughs> see, a little, uh, a little skewed. Okay, I'm going to go I'm down only... and check you with the right. brain tank down at the Fox News Central. <laughs> Car- Car- get Car- your, you get your little white skirt on. <laughs> yeah, I don't look good in a little white skirt. I just don't. Um, you know who else doesn't look good in a little white skirt? Or a little white lie, Ben Carson. Ben Carson, who got caught. He and his wife. <laughs> See, this is this is why it's Fire Everybody Friday because Ben yeah. Carson got caught in a big fat fucking lie. He and his wife just got caught cold lying. Yeah. Uh, this this yep. money they were this taxpayer money they were splurging on office supplies and furniture that they then lied about and said they had nothing to do with, and then reporters foiled their email and said, "Actually, no. Here's an email, and here's you deeply involved with it, and here's you and you here's and you shopping for it and deciding what." style you wanted and so forth and mrs carson to me i mean i I am speculating here but she looks like someone who's lived lived under a tremendously strict budget from her husband all her marriage and now she got the chance to splurge with other people's money for other people's furniture and she's going to go to town and i you know i see that i see what's going on here and you look at the emails and she went with Top of the line, you know, yep. this is not my money. This is not my husband's money. I'm going to go top of the line. And uh, uh, the shopper was looking for other money. This is, they're looking for, you know, the Home Depot guy who who funded Bush's second inaugural. Right. There's always private money out there sure. to donate for this, but that's not what they did. They just went out and bought the furniture. Because Mrs. Ben Carson has has lived a life where the centerpiece of her living room is a picture of her husband and Jesus. And Jesus, yes, yes, so yes. That's got to grind on you after a while. Yeah. Uh, but hopefully uh, he'll be losing his job. And then, I don't know, uh, Steve Ducey will take over the job of, of running public housing. Cause that's it. That's it. Yep. He lives yep. in a house. So what more do you need? No. Um, yep. The Qatari government uh, has decided not to provide Robert Mueller with information uh, because they're afraid that it might hurt relationships with the Trump organization. Mm-hmm. It might fuck up the business deal. So it just, there is no, there's no way, there's no navigation in here. There's no way to move. No matter what happens, it looks bad because it is bad. There's no, there's no plausible theory of this case other than it's either unbelievably corrupt or it's unbelievably corrupt and treasonous. This is either, this is like if Agnew and Nixon had a baby. <laughs> and half of the baby's DNA is just treachery, treason, yeah, skullduggery, rat fucking, et cetera. Yep. And one of them is just like a thug who embezzles money and, and extorts money from people. Mm-hmm. That's the Trump presidency. It's the worst of everything. Yep. And, you know, with a big orange package. So good for you, Republican America. Thanks again for, for planning this in the White House. We're never going to let you forget it. The nope. news media might let you off the hook, let, might let you put on funny hats and pretend you didn't vote for this guy. But we never will. We've pretty much had it with you, and we're going to make sure that you know who we are and what we know what you did last summer. Yep. Um, would you like to continue? Sure. Ivanka Trump received $1.5 million in 2017 from three companies affiliated with the Trump Organization. And Trump Jr. has a previously undisclosed business relationship with a friend who helped raise millions of dollars for his father's 2016 presidential campaign, you mean oh. like there's graft and money and money laundering and yeah. all kinds of malfeasance going on with the Trump Organization and the campaign? Is that what you're trying to say, Drew Glass? Uh-huh. Oh. Uh, the family of Seth Rich, 
filed a lawsuit against Fox News and a bunch of other people over the conspiracy bullshit they were pumping out as news. Uh, Related to that, uh, Shep Smith Mm -hmm. on Fox has pointed out that his colleagues at Fox News are uh, basically uh, the entertainment division. Right. And not real news, and apparently that hurt uh, a couple of people's fifis over I'm there. A real, I'm a reporter. I'm not a real entertainment. I'm a reporter. No. Well, and no. and as was pointed out, uh, it's you're you don't want to be called entertainment until you get caught. Right. You know this is this is the point. Shep Smith says, "Look, your opinion programs are strictly entertainment." Says Shep Smith, and Laura Ingram gets all bent out of shape. I've always liked Shep, but his comments were inconsiderate. You know, you get caught with a flat out lie, and it breaks the Fox News bubble and and becomes the story because, like, like this Seth Rich story. Yeah. Because you know Hannity's obsession with this becomes the story that excuse is always then well we're the entertain we're entertainment oh and, you know, and we're this, not news you know, this is we, also true at the grassroots level with fox news watchers you know absolutely. The, the people in my life who have who have who are drunk on fox and been drunk on fox news you know joy juice for for 15 years every time a lie blows up in their face there's two excuses one the most common one is uh you know both sides do it democrats are just as bad the other one is oh just it was just a joke yeah you guys can't take a joke it's just a joke it's just fun it's just entertainment and no, it's not. Uh, but what will be funny is watching uh, the guy you elected marched off in chains. That yep. will be hilarious. I will laugh and laugh and laugh. Actually, I'll cry that day because my country needs this to be over now. And, well, and, and I don't want over. the family of Seth Rich to suffer. No. But, you know, if, if it's within their uh, constitution, physical constitution, to hang in there. Uh-huh. And not settle and right. let there be discovery. Yep. And get those texts, get those meeting notes, get what is what the script is for the Hannity show uh-huh. on nights when Seth Rich is the lead story and publish that shit. Yep. You're gonna find out there's coordination with the White House, there's coordination with and and the findings, whatever findings there are, anything that's extraneous can be published too. You know, the whole sheet. You're going to find out the House Intel Committee is in for a world of pain. Uh, but again, it's it's that's a tough road to hoe because it's, it's in the same category as suing the Klan. It yeah, you got to really you got to be in it for the long long haul, and it yep. it opens up a lot of pain. Uh-huh. And uh, the problem is often that there's pressure from your attorneys to settle, right? Because the money then got part of that goes in their pockets. Yeah. You know, and it's that's easier. It's easier. And it's well, easier. Yeah. All the Trump University students who got ripped off. Yeah. Trump just wrote a check for twenty five million dollars. He yeah. suddenly found money, uh, paid him off because he wanted yeah. to be president. He couldn't do that with the hand, that hanging over his head. So he said, fine, fine, fine. Just pay him off. And that's how it was fixed. That's how he got and, to be And the White media House. stopped talking about it. Right. And that, it was, over. that was criminal. The fact that the, they stopped talking about it at that point because it was settled. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Trump floated the idea of developing a space force, which yeah. you pointed out in a wonderful post. Everybody should go over and read Drift Glass. <laughs> this is yeah. Don Rumsfeld's recycled idea. Recycling, yeah. they're real into recycling, but it's yeah. just the shitty ideas from Shit, the, the 80s. Ideas, yeah, the shittiest <laughs> ideas in the world are all that they recycle. And this yeah. was a Don Rumsfeld idea from 2005, I think, four mm-hmm. or five. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have to weaponize space, which is an incredibly bad idea. And now that we're going to weaponize space, we have to have space marines up there to protect us from the space baddies. <sighs> and and it was just an excuse to spend a shitload more money on stuff we do not need and cannot afford and cannot be defended against. And I wrote a long post saying, you know, it's not that hard to take out an orbital platform. You need a bag of gravel and a rocket. <laughs> That's pretty much it. But why not? It just popped out of his mouth. And sure, we'll do that. Why not? Because it occurred to me, therefore, it's a good idea. Um, you I'm, continue. Uh, Go ahead. Gina... Gina, torture Barbie, Haspel, is currently the deputy director of the CIA and who will replace Pompeo as the head of the CIA. This is the woman who destroyed evidence of torture and who lied about it and who conducted, uh, who oversaw the torture regime under the Bush administration. Yeah, there, there's some uh, back and forth. There's been some retractions on some of the stories about her, uh-huh. but uh, she's clearly pro-enhanced interrogation, just oh. like Liz Cheney. 
Yeah. And I, yeah, did we'll, you hear about Liz Cheney's tweet and getting dragged all over Twitter today? Uh, yeah, she sent out, you know, Congresswoman Liz Cheney sent out a tweet uh, defending enhanced interrogation in response to John McCain, who is still on Twitter, uh, saying, no, Gina Haspel's not really a good idea to head the CIA. And uh, Liz Cheney decided to defend the enhanced interrogation techniques and so forth. And it worked and it got us good intel and it did this and it did that. And uh right. It turns out Megan McCain replied to Liz Cheney and said, don't try to teach my dad about torture. Right. Let's start um, with your dad. Let's start with so, your dad. Let's start with Dick Cheney and see what kind Dick of sequence Cheney we can pry out of here. Yeah, yeah. John McEntee, Driftglass. Yes. What What about him? Well, well, I trust that he man. Had, I trust, no, he, he was fired. Oh, he's the only guy I trusted in the whole he had, Trump administration. He had crimes, Drift Glass. Oh, he he is the body man carrying all the bags in and out of Air Force helicopter from the oh. east garden or whatever he's in charge of shredding the evidence yeah that guy <laughs> that he, guy. he so uh, wasn't allowed to go back and get his jacket because apparently secret service is now doing the vetting for everybody oh good for them and they found well, alleged my... crimes so now he's unemployable right can't no he, he they said what you you're it's alleged not convicted hey why don't you go work for trump 2020 right across yeah. the street <laughs> Yeah, come on across the street. Pull up a lawyer and then then join the crowd. We get we get reserved. We a got seat a for whole it. bunch of people who are on that alleged not convicted uh, yeah. you know list over there. So go on over there. You'll have we'll give you a paycheck over there. No problem. So yeah, I I, I think uh, they they tucked fifty bucks in his pocket like uh, Goodfellas. Yeah. Said you didn't rat. You didn't rat. <laughs> really, that's that's the most important thing is that you. Uh, you have a job with the Trump uh, Trump organization for as long as you want because you didn't rat us out. This right. is the guy who's in charge of, of uh, probably disposing of uh, Trump's poopy sheets in the morning since mm-hmm. we believe he's continent and delivering his uh, many, many Diet Cokes and Big Macs to him during the day right. by which he sustains himself to lie and lie and lie and lie and lie. Well, so he, apparently, uh, you know, they're looking for a soft landing for H.R. McMaster, but Trump 2020 isn't being considered no. for uh, three-star general to go over and work for the campaign. But uh, – John McEntee, that he's right at that level that he can go yeah. work work for them. Yeah, he'll he'll be uh, useful. Well, that's delightful. I hear that the uh, that Donald Trump this weekend, this last weekend, burned out his caps lock key. <laughs> he uh, did. He did tweeting to deprived yes. him of half his vocabulary uh, because the House Intelligence Committee, the House Committee, the Devin Nunez Freak Show Committee, uh, shut down. Because everything's great and nothing's wrong and nobody did nothing. Everyone's innocent. Everyone should just go home and be quiet and shut up about it. And Donald Trump got his big big boy uh, phone out and went, I'm, I'm innocent. Everybody shut up and go away. I'm innocent, man. All, in all caps because that's presidential. Uh, right. You know what? I don't think what uh, we're going to be seeing the pivot anytime this <laughs> week. <laughs> no pivot. I despair no pivot. maybe you won't see the pivot next week, but soon. Soon, Van Jones will be able to go back on television and say, "This is the week that Donald Trump became swear to God became I swear president. to God. I swear to God." Um, <sighs> and one level down, in his cabinet, uh, Betty DeVos humiliated herself again. She did. There, there isn't anyone who works in this White House who isn't an absolute abject, humiliating failure and grifter. Think about that. It's not just one or two. It's a genius. It's it's flooding the zone. Yeah, it's you just yeah. jam as many insane asshole criminals into one organization at, and it's like it it is the sort of the opposite of Martin Luther King's strategy of civil disobedience, where you 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 fill the jails, yep, and and with p- protesters you have no place left to put them. We're going to fill the White House with so many criminals that you won't know what to do. Yeah, you and because, so many grifters and so yeah. many so, every, there'll be everyone will be taking first class flights everywhere. So and you won't crimes. know where to hammer first. Yeah. Where to well, and I found it amazing that on the day that this should have been the headline. Uh-huh. And, and and of course on Fox it was but that his claim that the House Intel Committee completely exonerated me. Yeah, no collusion, no collusion. This is the news. That's when he goes ahead and fires the Secretary of State via Twitter. Right. There is right. no control over the message anywhere. Uh, we have learned uh, during a little break we took that, uh, number one, Southeast won their yeah, did. playoff game. Yay! 
Yay! By many, many points. And we'll be going on to the, the state championships tomorrow at 1245. So we're very, very excited about that. Uh, also, um, Mark Short, who is a White House spokesman, he's he's the non-female White House spokesman, uh, it was complaining, Drift Glass, oh, today wow. that that Congress is taking too long to confirm Donald Trump's appointments. At this oh. rate, it's going to take 11 and a half years. And uh, he didn't mention Merrick Garland's name once. Not one yeah. time. Merrick who? Yeah. 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 The stolen Supreme Court seat. Yeah. Anyway, uh, and, and uh, Drift Glass... Just so you know, uh-huh. <laughs> Sam Nunberg. <laughs> yeah, Sam who? That was last week. Sam what? <laughs> Sam where? Never heard of it. Sham Wow. This is a Sham Wow commercial. <laughs> and uh, has anybody heard of this little uh, little territory we like to call Puerto Rico? Yeah. I guess everything's fine there now. No, everything's great. Everything's fine. Everything's repaired. Nope. Back to normal. Nope. Sailing along smooth as silk. Nope. No problems at all. Nope. Um, no, this is how fast um, the distraction box works. This is why. Um, I, I need to come up with the right term for it. It's, not, it's like the uncivil rights movement. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It's, it really is just packing the news cycle with so much crazy shit that you can only really notice 10% of it. So 90% of it is uh, is uh, a Ben Carson stuffing silverware in his pockets and running away. Right, you know, the, right. Just like, oh, porn stars? Yeah. Ben Carson ripping the place off? First class tickets. We're going to trash the EPA. The woman who now runs the Department of Education can't answer basic questions about schools and 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 hasn't really visited any of the. She's the visited tough se- less than seventeen in yeah. in three hundred and sixty five days, and yeah. two of them, two or three of them, were on one day with yeah. the AFT president. So yeah, were, yeah. those were the because those are where the pores are, <laughs> and I don't really want to be around those people. They make me feel bad. She's about, she's a country yeah. club maven who just can smile sweetly, well, and and be elegant and and uh, wear just the right clothes and carry just the right bag. But she doesn't as, know squat about education, and she hasn't learned anything in a year. As we mentioned last week about the alienist, this mm-hmm. is these are the wealthy people who think of the rest of us as livestock. Yeah. Yeah, and she doesn't want to give the poor's names because then she might get attached to them and feel some <laughs> obligation to not ruining their lives. Yeah, and she on purpose just... didn't go to underperforming schools because uh, she she feels schools are made up of individual students. Right. Yeah, they're made up of individual students going to underperforming schools who yes. have problems like and individual, poverty well, individual students, and yeah. To be fair, individual students are made up of individual molecules <laughs> and. There are molecules everywhere. So yeah. really, hasn't she visited schools? Because there are she molecules them everywhere. All in through her lipstick. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, drift class. Uh, each week, may I do that yes. now? I, I didn't know if you wanted a little Bible bitch this week, but uh, you know what? Next week. Oh, God is love. Yes. This week. This week, I'll be making pancakes. By the way. So, oh. Yeah. You will. This is the, the yeah. I the the men's group is going to do. Pancakes. Oh, that's right. It's pancake yeah. breakfast on Sunday. I thought you were yeah. just going to make pancakes for me for dinner. Well, I will be happy to make pancakes for you for dinner with applesauce and fruit and anything you like, darling. But this Sunday, I have to sort of this take This Sunday, off you have my... to get up early and go yeah. and run the Hobart on the yeah. big pancake mixer. I, yeah. I, it's, it's my job. Uh, and I have Put to give up certain other duties to those duties. And... and you guys are sitting in the back of the kitchen talking and fixing the world's problems. It's kind of fun. That's right. That's right. It is kind of fun, actually. Yeah. You know? Hey, each week we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. But this week's Internet Kitty... Internet kitties are internet corgis. What? The internet corgis of the week, Molly May and Sadie Lou, who achieved election fame as corgis against Trump. They're <laughs> still corgis, and they're still against Trump, and this week they are internet corgis of the week. You can send your internet kitty or whatever you have to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, or you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go, Postal Unions! Letter on the air, unless you say otherwise. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job. Yup. 
Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. We have PayPal. We have GoFundMe. We have Patreon. We have a postal address where you can just mail us a check. All of that information is there at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on Facebook or Twitter or any other social media you have. We There is a comment thread, Drift Glass, over at Balloon Juice. What? Asking, what political podcast do you listen to? And several people have mentioned us in the yes. comment thread. Thank you for doing that. We appreciate and they, it. And they were barred from comments forever. For no, they that. weren't. No, they weren't. No, <laughs> no they weren't. No. Balloon Juice are nice people. No, they, they don't. Are. No, they weren't. They, no. people, people said, there were some people who said, I can't get through Friday night without listening to Pro Left Podcast. And that just makes my heart feel so good. It does. It really does. And we, we love talking to you and we love hearing back from you. So thank you for everything. Hey, Drift Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Well, first, the Internet Kitties want to say, Go Spartans! East Side! Which is Pride! Thing, thing <laughs> East Side uh, the, Pride, yes. The, the second thing the Internet Kitties want to say is, A Happy St. Patrick's Day to everyone. And everyone this year is not only an honorary Irish person, they're also an honorary half Indian and gay person, like the Irish Prime Minister. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, lovey dovey. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2018, DGBG Productions Incorporated.